We're excited again to have you here. My name is Rebecca Almanza. I'm the Director of Development here at St. Anne. Um, and super excited to introduce our chairs to you today. We're going to have an interactive night of discussion, adoration, will be beautiful. And so we just invite you to enter in with your hearts and um, be open to what we're about to share. So first off, I'd like to introduce our chairs for this campaign for Transcend, um, JL and Mark Williard and Rex and Barbara Sanders. And JL's gonna go ahead and give us a little bit of a reflection. Good evening, is that better? Great. On behalf of Father Edwin and the Transcend Campaign Committee members, we would like to welcome you tonight to this beautiful evening of worship and thanksgiving. It is such a blessing to see all of you here, especially considering that the temperatures are dropping and you guys are so dedicated and your hearts are just so joyful about this. So thank you so much for spending the evening with us. Um, and thank you really for the, your prayers and being in you know, um, part of this Holy Spirit-inspired effort. When Mark and I attended the very first night of adoration to pray for the guidance of the Holy Spirit, we came away from that night um, really with hearts on fire for what we believed the Holy Spirit was calling the St. Anne community to do. And we're a part of that, um, to help create an environment where Jesus is present in the tabernacle, in this beautiful space, 24-7. What an amazing and transformational gift that would be to our community and to the future generations. But we also have a, another wonderful opportunity, and that's to help create a beautiful, sacred space that not only brings people to Jesus, but invites them to a personal encounter with him. And you're here tonight because you know what it does when you have a personal encounter with our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. And he draws him he draws us to himself and that changes your life and so creating this sacred space will impact us and our families but it will also impact for decades generations to come and so that is really what we're excited about so tonight we welcome you to be with us in prayer with be with us in adoration and a night where we allow our hearts to be open and transcend the ordinary Thank you, Jill. And now we will invite Barbara Sanders to come up with her husband, Rex Sanders, to open us up with the prayer. I don't know if you can see me. <laughs> okay, I'm going to say a little prayer. If you'll bow your heads and try to receive these words. Come, Holy Spirit, Lord and giver of life. Heal our hearts and renew our minds. Grant us the grace to be transformed by your power as we go forward to build a place of beauty for your abiding presence. Amen. Thank you, Barbara, for that beautiful prayer and for JL for your beautiful remarks. I would like to recognize and ask our committee for the Transcend campaign to please stand up. They're wearing blue shirts. You'll see them up at the front here and they'll be available. Yes, thank you. And just please note that our uh, committee chairs will be available at the end uh, for any questions that you might have. They're wearing the Transcend shirt with the blue logo on it and so um, they're, they're all, a lot of fun, friendly people. Just you know, if you have any questions you have about this campaign or anything you're wondering about, please ask them uh, towards the end. They'll be in the narthex and on each side of the transepts here. So I would like to um, introduce Father Edwin, our pastor. Everyone knows him, so I need, need not say any more. And one of our committee members, Jason Osterberger, to come on up. And Jason will um, interview Father with some questions about Transcend. Father. Hey, Jason. Hi, everyone. Welcome. Thank you so much for being here. Your participation in this campaign is what's going to make it successful. I just want to first begin like everybody else has before. 23 years ago, a group of parishioners decided it was important enough to give their financial gifts and their talents to provide this beautiful mm -hmm. sanctuary to us. And I think it's just beautiful that tonight we are asking this faith community to provide it for the next generation. 
Tonight, I want to begin by honoring those founding members. If you're a founding member of St. Anne, would you please stand? Do we have anybody here? There's got to be a few. Yes. Thank you so much. Stay standing. Stay standing. If you are a current member of St. Anne Parish, please stand. This, my brothers and sisters, this is the group of people that will provide for the next generation. You are the people that we look to Amen. to help those people come to our parish. Before you sit down, introduce yourself to the person next to you. Tell them how long you've been a parishioner and your favorite experience here. I'm gonna begin by asking two rapid fire questions, Father. The answers to these questions is the key. Short and sweet. Why does everyone preface that they need my answers to be short? We don't need a homily right now. We just need some answers. Okay, you ready? And I thought long and hard about these questions. Before you had that reserved seat over here on the altar, where did you and your family sit in the, in the church? My family still sits in the same area, right there behind the piano um, on this side right over here. Okay. Do you have a favorite spot on campus that you like to frequent? Other than the Perpetual Adoration Chapel and, you know, the actual altar at the Mass, which I think is a, a simple answer, um, I love the courtyard. It is a gift to our community where we're able to build community and to be able to know each other and be the body of Christ. Awesome. Okay, tonight we are officially launching the Transcend campaign. I have a twofold question. First part, what does this Transcend, can Transcend campaign mean? And the second part, what are the three phases we are approaching so transcend, our whole theme on this is to transcend the ordinary, right? To be drawn up into heaven. And so it's a beautiful image of the mass that we're not just doing something earthly, that when we enter into the holy sacrifice, God draws us in to the sacrifice of the mass. And so we join the angels and the saints, and we want to be able to make our church um, speak that truth to us every single time that we walk in. It's not just an ordinary place. Something special, unique, and irrepeatable happens here every single time we walk in. And so we have a couple phases to do that. Our first phase is going to bring, is being to bring in the tabernacle. And so we're going to use our chapel as a template of how to continue to enhance and beautify our current church building. So we have a reredos in our chapel. That's the wood structure that holds the tabernacle. And so we'll, we'll bring in a reredos and a tabernacle into our church, our Lord's very presence here with us at every single Mass. And then we will paint the church. Uh, you can see in our renderings that we'll show you here in a little bit. Um, coming up. Coming up, that we're going to paint the ceiling. It'll be like the stars in the sky, much like our chapel where our Blessed Mother is, that blue and that gold theme. And then we'll paint our dome above us with a beautiful heavenly reality of the saints that, and the angels that worship with us. And that's phase one. Phase two is to fix our sound system so that you can hear the word of God and that you can engage mass and to make our lighting um, new and fitting to the new beautiful church space. And then third and finally, I don't know if you've been over to our Perpetual Adoration Chapel recently, um, but it's a pretty tight fit. You know, you get about 15 people in there and there's always about 15 people in there and you feel a little claustrophobic. So we want to find a new place on campus and have a new chapel there that we can renovate so that we can have 30, 40, 50 people adoring the Lord. And that's a pretty high-class problem to have um, in the world today, to have that many people that want to worship the Lord uh, 24 hours a day. And so we're looking forward to that. And then we sent out a survey asking if we have, um, you know, a lot of participation in this project in phase three, what would you like to have happen? And there was uh, an overwhelming call from the community to be able to continue to build up our community with a playground. And so that's in phase three as well. Will we be adding more bathrooms to the Adoration Chapel too? Oh, no, 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 no. <laughs> We're going to have an Adoration Chapel away from bathrooms so you don't have there to listen go. to toilets flush as you're adoring the Lord. Why now? What is so special about today that you're asking us parishioners to boldly stand with you? Well, I mean, we are, we've been a parish in this actual building for 23 years, and it, as everything is, you're not the same as you were 23 years ago. 
And so we grow with the times and with the season, and we think that this is a unique moment that our bishops have called for a Eucharistic revival, that the way in which God wants to encounter us in a personal way, uh, the bishops say, is by falling back in love in a deeper way with the Eucharist. And we can't think of a better way than to actually bring a tabernacle and our Lord here at Mass. I also think that it meets the new generation of people. I I think there are a lot of people that are searching and they are tired of the ordinary. They've seen what the world has to offer and they found it wanting. And so they want something eternal. And we as Catholics have always had that. And we want to lean into that for the next generation. Beauty speaks truth and goodness to people who have never known the truth and goodness of the Lord. And so you'll see If you go to Protestant churches, I guarantee you in the coming years, they're going to start having liturgical colors of green and purple, and they're going to start fasting more. Um, I just went to one of our local churches, uh, Watermark, and they, one of the pastors told me, "Uh, we built a chapel that's just dedicated for prayer and silence. And I was like, that's beautiful. (laughs) Love it. And they're like, and we're hoping soon to have someone praying in that chapel uh, 24 hours a day. And I was like, that's a great idea. (laughs) We've been doing it since 05. Um, And so you're going to see with this wanting of the eternal, more and more people turning to the liturgical because it transcends the ordinary. And we want to lean into our Catholic heritage in this project. I agree. I think this is a very bold next step for us to live out our mission here at St. Anne. Amen. I think other parishes look to us for guidance, for leadership, for creative ideas. Um, I just can't believe that how many people are involved in ministries here at our parish in some form or fashion. Do you know that we have over a hundred ministries that we offer? And also, how many people attend mass here on the weekend? Yeah, everybody's hand, hopefully. (laughs) Did you know that there is over almost 10,000 people that pass through our doors for Mass each week? That's incredible. I think what a gift to give those that attend. Can you remind me, though, Father, before we we have the big unveiling, the mission of St. Anne? Our vision and our mission is to bring people to Jesus, to form disciples, and to send them to transform the world. Awesome. Okay, I feel like we need a little drum roll or like Joey, lights, camera, action. It's finally here, everybody. Oh, Joey, coming through for us. Okay, I'm gonna lead everybody in a little exercise before we start. Not the kind of exercise Father does on a daily basis. We're not gonna be running, cardio, lifting weights. This is an exercise that I enjoy, closing my eyes. So I would ask everybody, sit up, put your feet on the floor, and I'm gonna ask you to close your eyes for a second. I would like for you to think with your eyes closed, What do you remember about our sanctuary? What colors, what art, what symbols, what details do you remember? Now open your eyes, you get three seconds, look around, take in what we have, and close your eyes again. When you open your eyes this time, look at the screens. This is what St. Anne will become. Ta-da! Wow, <laughs> it's hard to see. There's booklets at the after mass to come, or after uh, our conversation in the back. But as you can see in this beautiful rendering, we have the warm ceiling tones that are really going to warm up the space, the art and paintings along the columns to accentuate those, the beautiful art and statues that are going to be introduced into the church, and all of this will help draw our eye to the altar, the most important part. The rare dose that will be in the back, that's gonna house our crucifix, our tabernacle, and two saints. What two saints, Father, will be back there that you've chosen? Well, of course, we're gonna put Saint Anne there so that she can be in a prominent place in our sanctuary. And then, like any good mother, she's gonna point to Mary, her daughter right there, who always points towards her son. And so our family lineage um, and Jesus' grandmother and his mom, and then we'll have our Lord there as well. I love it. And then as we get a little closer in, we're gonna see the transfiguration. On this, as you can tell, more vibrant, more saints, and as a little bit of art history I know, much more representative of Raphael's original painting. Can you explain a little bit of what's happening here? 
So in Raphael's original painting, there's basically three different scenes that are going on. Of course, the one that we're very familiar with that's captured in our transfiguration, and we're going to continue to have that because it's a beautiful moment where Peter is there and he says, I want to stay up on the mountain. I want to see God's glory. This is great. Let's stay here. And God interrupts him and says, no, this is my beloved son with whom I'm well pleased. Listen to him. And Jesus says, we have to go down the mountain. I was sent into the world to do battle against evil and to bring people to salvation. And so he does immediately. You'll see on the, from your perspective, on the right-hand side, the father is bringing a young boy. This young boy was uh, possessed by an evil spirit, and he asked the apostles, who were on the left-hand side, if, he could, if they could cast a, the demon out. And the apostles couldn't do it. So Jesus comes down the mountain, and the father looks at Jesus and says, if you can do anything. And Jesus says, if. And the father says, I believe, but help my unbelief. Which is just such a beautiful prayer. I believe, but help my unbelief. And Jesus immediately casts out the power of evil from his son. And then on the left-hand side, you see the apostles that couldn't cast out the demon, and they ask Jesus, why couldn't we do this? And Jesus looks at them and says, some things can only be done through prayer and fasting. And so that in order to be more powerful in this world, we need to do less and allow the Lord to do more in us through prayer and fasting. And that is such a beautiful representation when we see God's glory and when we have, as Catholics, we know there's a temptation just to stay here within these four walls, right? But at every single Mass, we are sent out into the world that we can't just do it ourselves. Prayer and fasting is how the Lord's going to work powerfully. Awesome. Okay. Now we're going to do another exercise. Look up. Look at our dome. Womp, womp, womp. Womp, womp, womp. Okay, what can this dome become? Voila. On the dome, you will see there are several saints that are represented. You will also see the beautiful colors and the definition of of bringing that vibrancy up to the dome. In this dome, Father, can you give me just two, two of your favorite saints today? Doesn't have to be all time, today. And what is the representation? Why is it so important to have this above the altar? Okay. So as you know, the, in our altar, we have eight saints. Their relics are present. And so our dome is going to have them up there. But the two saints that I'm most excited about today about having are uh, St. Maximilian Kolbe and St. Jose Sanchez del Rio. And these two saints are so powerful because they're not in our altar, but they express a charism, each one of them, of the St. Anne's community. Maximilian Kolbe was a martyr. He gave his life for somebody else. He loved our Blessed Mother fiercely. Uh, But the reason the charism that he gives so powerfully is he was also concerned with spreading the word of God in the newest and most technologically advanced ways. He had a radio station for Catholicism before there were radio stations. He had pamphlets in different languages, and he spread them far and wide. And we have a deep commitment to mass communication and uh, being able to help people encounter the word of God. So that's him. Jose Sanchez del Rio uh, at St. Anne's is known for not just our vibrant community, but in our community, um, our young people, the young people that vibrantly want to be saints. And Jose Sanchez del Rio is a 14-year-old boy that was at the turn of the 20th century in the Cristeros Wars, uh, was captured by the then Mexican government that was trying to silence the Catholic Church, and they made Catholicism illegal, and some people... Uh, stood up and said no, and Jose Sanchez del Rio at 14 was one of them, and said, um, I'm going to fight for freedom to be able to practice my Catholic faith. They captured him and said, renounce your faith or we're going to torture you. And his response was, viva Cristo Rey, viva la Virgen de Guadalupe. And so they said, we're going to torture you now. And they cut off the bottom of his feet and made him walk bloody footprints across the city. And his witness uh, inspired a whole new generation to rise up and fight for their faith beautifully. Uh, And I can't think of a better person to show our commitment to our high schoolers, our middle schoolers, our children, um, that we want to be saints and that they can inspire us in beautiful ways.
So those are my two saints. I love it. Okay, how many people here were baptized at St. Anne? If you were baptized here, raise your hand. I know you three were. How many people do you think are baptized here at St. Anne in a year? I was shocked when I found out. Does anybody have a number? 500? Not that big. 425 is the number from last year. That's incredible. 425 people that come. So the next slide we're going to look at is the baptistry. For those of you that don't know, I learned yesterday, that's the back. Right there by the baptismal font. So we're going to look at that baptistry area. Wow. So you will see on this slide, it's a lighter blue ceiling. There's going to be possibly some proposed artwork back there. And then, of course, the dome. The dome is painted. Can you please tell us what's being represented in the dome? So both of our domes, the one in the baptistry and the one here, are meant to represent the fact as we're transcending the ordinary that we're taken from the things of this world that are passing and we're being drawn into the eternal, into the heavenly reality. And so that's our dome here. We're worshiping with the saints and the angels uh, in the sacrifice of Christ that happens once for all. And the same thing happens here. The heavens open up and the Holy Spirit descends upon us at our baptism in the same way as when Jesus was baptized in Matthew chapter 3 and the Lord says this is my beloved son with um, this is my beloved son with whom I am well pleased every single baptism he says to us this is my beloved child with whom I am well pleased he adopted each one of us into his family and so it is proper by uh, to Jesus by his nature is given to us by grace and the Holy Spirit rests upon us and I know there's a bird that's going to be represented. The Holy, Holy Spirit. Spirit, yes, you, sorry. You can't forget yes. the Holy Spirit. The dove I mean, is the Holy Spirit the coming down. Thank you. The dove is back there in the back. I know you and your team have been working diligently on kind of this bolt together. And as a designer, I know that some of these details may change slightly as we come to the end. Right. So I just want to make everybody aware, when you see the images, just know some things are still being selected and some things will tweak as Father and the team put their finishing touches on that. I know, though, I would like to see if we can maybe show just a couple more details of things that you do have full together. JB, would you like to tell us a little bit about what these are? So you'll notice in our back area of our sanctuary, there is a number of things that we keep as storage back there. And so we want to be able to make our sanctuary our sanctuary and to make sure that our live stream, which is so beneficial uh, to spreading the word of Jesus far and wide, is able to still happen at our church, but to be able to not affect the beauty of our sanctuary space. And so we have these iron uh, gates with stained glass in them so that we can have this beautiful sanctuary space dedicated towards the Lord, but still have some practical space in the back for other things. Awesome. Second one. It's the ceiling. You'll notice our <laughs> ceiling is, will be that uh, wonderful blue color with the stars. This, it'll symbolize us passing through the heavens into the heavenly reality. And this is a great picture of how, to see how the, the dome and the apse mural fit together. Awesome. I think Rebecca's flashing us. Either she's telling us, peace be with you, or two minutes left. One of the two, which one should we go with? <laughs> two minutes left. Good. Awesome. Okay. I just want to thank everybody for listening. I know this was a quick, brief overview of what we're doing. We have booklets in the back that after we would love for you to come and look at and ask questions. And then over the next several months, I know we'll be sending out more information with more detail and more information as that comes available. I want to, Father, allow you to step down. I know we need to get ready for adoration. Just want to say thank you to everybody for coming here today and continue to pray for this. And without any further ado, that's what we're going to do. We're going to go before our Lord and Savior and ask him uh, to continue to make this, not just our plan, but his uh, most importantly, exactly. to bring it to fruition. Thank, thank you, Jason. You. Appreciate thank it. Thank you. Okay. At this time, I'm going to invite Rebecca Almanza up. She's going to give us the three phases of our campaign, the costs associated with that. And just to remind everybody that each and every gift given is important, from the small to the large. I think it's so important that each family is represented in the transformation that happens. Thank you so much, Rebecca. Thank you, Jason and Father Edwin.
That was fantastic. Let's give him another round of applause. Um, as Father mentioned, there are three phases to this project, and as Jason mentioned, every gift uh, is equally important. And so we want to um, be able to provide many opportunities for parishioners to help support Transcend. Um, the project overall for the first phase with bringing the tabernacle and the Raridos into the tabernacle is um, approximately $3 million, and so that is with all of the paint inside of here, all of the renderings that you saw within inside of the church. With the second phase of the lighting and sound, that would be another million, um, which would bring us to a total of four. And with that third phase, the playground and relocation of the Adoration Chapel, we're at about an estimated $5 million. So we're looking for support and help in that process um, with where we are right now with pledges so far, just parishioners coming forward as they've heard about this since we started last year. We're at about um, one million pledged, and we do have an anonymous donor that is willing to match new pledges of up to a million dollars as well. So we really would appreciate everyone's support um, and prayers for this process. There are pledge cards in the pews um, on our website. There's ways to give on as well. Tomorrow at the masses, you will, help, you will, you will hear Father um, invite everyone in to make a gift for this campaign. We want to be able to put forward the way that those before us were able to help us be in this spiritual space and create an even uh, more wonderful way for us to meet the heavenly together. So we will have our captains in the back, our committee captains in the back at the end of adoration available for questions again on each side of the transepts. There will also have booklets so you can see more detail of the renderings. There will be some um, naming opportunities as well so if you have questions on those please indicate so on the pledge cards. Uh, you'll notice that there were over uh, a thousand stars in the ceiling so might be something to do with that and um, we just again want to thank you so much for being here this evening and please prepare for Jesus as we begin adoration. And